Welcome to our devotionals for October 4th. Thanksgiving Sunday is next Sunday. And in the past, that Sunday has been a very interactive and intergenerational service. I'd like to try to keep it as interactive as possible in two ways. Send me a short video of what you are thankful for. Or, and send me an email with a Thanksgiving item or a prayer request that we can include in the closing prayer. You can email me at revjenng at gmail.com. This morning, we will celebrate communion. Please know that anyone watching is welcome. You are welcome to participate or observe. For the Presbyterian Church in Canada believes that through communion, Christ offers himself to us and we present ourselves to him in worship and adoration. Christ places his table in the world to feed and bless his people. And so to celebrate communion is to give thanks to God. Those who belong to Christ are welcome to this table. So you do not have to be Presbyterian to participate. And if this is your first time participating in communion and you have further questions, you can email me at revgeng at gmail.com. So let us begin our worship. God prepares a banqueting table for us and calls us to feast together. We come from the east and west, from the north and the south, to sit at Christ's table. 
Today, this table is vast and crosses our doorways and borders. Today, this table is here in the church, is there in your homes, and is in every community and country that is participating in World Communion Sunday. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Let us worship God together. Please join me in prayer. Creator, Christ, and Spirit, deeply we hunger for touch and contact. You are our bread and our sustenance in every time and season. Deeply we thirst for community. You invite us to drink of this cup together, for you are the sweetness of life. Deeply we desire for what is true and what endures. It is you alone who was, who is, and who shall be. Make us aware of your presence in our worship, our hearing and interpreting of your word, and in our sacrament of communion this day. Out of a desire to be free to start again with you and one another, we confess that too often we have failed to speak and act with kindness, to care for others as we have been cared for, to welcome others as we have been welcomed, and to live as forgiven and beloved people. We remember the good not done, words not spoken, and grace not given or received. Forgive us and make us whole in Jesus' name. Amen. Trust in God's unfailing love. Rejoice because God has rescued us. Sing to the Lord because God is good. Know that through our confession, we are forgiven. Be courageous and forgive yourself and forgive others. Be joyful and give thanks to God. Amen. I would invite you to join us in singing hymn number 548, Let Us Break Bread Together. Our gospel passage, no, it's not a gospel passage this morning. It's, it's a scripture passage, though. Our scripture passage this morning comes from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through to 4, verses 7 through to 9, and verses 12 through to 21. The Ten Commandments. Then God spoke all these words. 
I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is in, on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slaves or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witness the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. Then the people stood at a distance while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On late evenings at the campsite, as the fire is at a comfortable level that doesn't require us to feed it all the time, one of us will say to the other, hey, want to lose at a game of crib? Now, in both of our households, cribbage was a game played after supper when visitors came or with family at the cottage or at Christmas gatherings. And so it is a game that both of us are equally proficient at. If we were to play Scrabble, it is inevitable that Mike will win. If we were to play Dutch Blitz, it is inevitable that I would win. But in a game of crib, it is anybody's game. Now, did you know that in England, it is the only card game that is allowed to be played in bars and pubs without a special license? Sir John Suckling invented the game in the 17th century. Now, it's said that he frequently spent entire mornings in bed with a pack of cards studying their subtleties. And what makes cribbage a special kind of card game is that it has relatively few rules but yields endless subtleties during play. Once you know the rules of the game, it is easy to figure out strategy and move your peg along the board. Rules are always important in establishing how to play a game, but they are also important in how we function as a society, how we elect officials, how we interact with one another, and today we heard the most famous list of rules ever recorded. We also celebrate communion today. I don't know if I've mentioned that yet. And embedded in our liturgy are rules, words and expressions, prayers and statements that are not only part of the pattern of communion, but speak to our theology and understanding of what this sacrament is, and therefore is an important piece to this action. Now, it should be noted that the church has had divisions over the rules of this and other sacraments. Yet today we are uniting with brothers and sisters in faith around the world to celebrate communion. Because that's part of our rules too. 
But first, let's look briefly at the Ten Commandments, because in truth, these are not simply a list of rules. That's not really what the commandments are about. The most striking and important thing about the Exodus version of the commandments is the introduction. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 2, God identifies God's self and refers to what God has done for the people of Israel. This means that the giving of the commandments provided the people with an identity and purpose. And note that this is an identity and purpose that is completely different from their identity as slaves in Egypt or as a wandering community in the wilderness. A Hebrew scholar, Amy Erickson, looks to the Ten Commandments as a way in which the people found liberty and freedom. These rules provide more than a list of how to behave. Quote, With the order of the commandments, God makes it possible for the people to view their new lives, even in the wilderness, not as chaotic and terrifying, but as meaningful and potentially fruitful. The commandments as a whole present an alternative version, vision to life in Egypt, a place where there was little interest in regeneration or rest or no freedom. We often think that rules are things that restrict us, and we hear a bit of that in the Ten Commandments. They are seemingly filled with thou shalts and thou shalt nots. But what if we were to look at them in the positive? We would see how liberating they truly are. Let's just look at a few. For example, the commandment, you shall have no other gods but me. Well, that means... In all things, put God first, put love, put grace, put compassion first. This is the first commandment because it is the first thing God does with us, puts us first. Or how about the commandment, do not take God's name in vain? This means respect the one who loves you. Speak lovingly of God so that the whole world knows this gift. Or remember the Sabbath becomes take time to pause and reflect on what is important in life. Connect with that which is always calling out to you. Find space to celebrate the one who offers you life. Or how about Do not covet another person's property. Well, that means celebrate what you already have. Great lives are not born by accumulation of things, but are birthed in the giving away of love. This is why God is so great. I thank the Church of Scotland resource for this Sunday for those paraphrases. Notice also that the first four commandments have to do with our relationship with God, while the remaining six speak to our relationship with one another. It is as if to say that in order for our relationships to be right with humans, we have to have a relationship with God first. Certainly that is not part of our current societal rules But the commandments create a space where humanity can live meaningful lives before God and one another. The freedom in the commandments is this. How one thinks about God affects how one thinks about their neighbor. This is the same rationale behind communion. It is an outward symbol of an inward commitment to live in community with Christ and with Christians. Did you know that the first World Communion Sunday first took place in a Presbyterian church in Pittsburgh in 1933? The Reverend Dr. Kerr first conceived of the idea while he was serving as moderator for the PCUSA in 1930. 
He hoped that it would bring churches together in a service of Christian unity, in which everyone might receive both inspiration and information, and above all, to know how important the Church of Jesus Christ is and how each congregation is interconnected with one another. It started off small at first, but it is celebrated around the world today. And this year, it is being celebrated in some pretty creative ways, mostly online. It was in 2012 that our General Assembly created the rule that we, would provide, we could provide virtual communion. And this was initially in response to the needs of remote congregations who were experiencing long vacancies. But little did we know how important that rule would become for all churches eight years later. The purpose of the commandments and the purpose of celebrating communion on this particular Sunday is part of who we are. It's in our rules. But like in a great game of cribbage, these rules aren't complicated. And rather, the subtleties in how we worship God, how we serve one another, how we celebrate communion and live in community are endless. This is not how we normally celebrate communion, but it is simply the act that brings us together. There is no doubt that it will feel different. But whether you are a part of our regular worshiping community or have just found us on YouTube, whether you have your elements prepared or not, whether this is your first foray into communion or this is old hat, you are welcome. And you are invited to participate in this sacrament as you feel comfortable. And it's not because I'm telling you this is part of our rules for this Sunday, but because it is an expression of how we find creativity in Christ and freedom in the commandments. Amen. This morning, our tables, whether it is here in the church, a coffee table in front of your couch, a computer desk, a kitchen table, your lap, this morning, they are not just tables, but the Lord's table. Come to this table which has been prepared for you, by you, through Jesus Christ. As I walk down to the communion table, I would invite you to gather your elements, usually of bread and juice, and have them close by. Now, the first time I participated in a virtual communion, I was completely unprepared. I didn't have bread or grape juice in the house. So I grabbed a saltine cracker and a grape, and it worked. So do not feel that this has to be perfect. And just know that if you love God a little and want to love God more, you are welcome to this table. I would invite you to join in the great prayer of thanksgiving, uh, which should appear on your screens. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, our God. You spoke, and at your word all things took shape and came into being, the sun and moon and stars, the sky and earth and waters, and all they contain. You established covenants and commandments with us, giving your people identity and purpose, transforming us from wanderers in the wilderness to people of God. But as liberating as they are, we didn't feel like the rules, we didn't like the rules, 
and we turned away from you and we tried to live apart from you and one another. But you never turn from us. Through the prophets, you call us back to you and to your ways. And you sent your son, the way, the truth, and the life, to reveal the full extent of your grace and love. Again and again, you welcome us and receive us with the open and welcoming arms of a loving parent. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with those from every time and place to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy is your son, Jesus, walking this earth, feeding the hungry, calling the lost, seeing the forgotten, touching those in need of healing, teaching those who sought out wisdom, and loving all. He showed your kingdom in your world, and we who are many are made one in him. In breaking bread and sharing of drink, we cross the borders of time and space and join the saints of all the ages as we recall together the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit upon us and upon these offerings of bread and drink. Transform all of our tables and all of our elements that we have prepared so that it binds us together in a great expression of faith and fulfillment with brothers and sisters around the globe. Gather your church together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom where peace and justice are realized so that with all your people, we share the banquet you have promised and provided. We pray all this as we join our voices in saying the prayer Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Whenever you eat it, do so in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. When we break this bread, it is the sharing of the body of Christ. When we bless this cup, it is the sharing of the blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, 
May we see the commandments and communion as hopes for the community. May we live toward each commandment knowing it is the way of life you chose for us. Having been fed and quenched, bring us together in grace, hope, and generosity. Help us to celebrate the gifts of being neighbors. Help us to celebrate the way we can connect, reach out, and find identity and purpose even during a pandemic. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. I would invite you to join us in singing hymn number 563. Let us talents and tongues employ. A big thank you to Carol Ann and Elvira for their recordings uh, today. And a reminder that if you're interested, we do have uh, the piano recordings from Elvira and you can sing along and we can record them and then we can play them on Sundays uh, for the rest of the congregation. Find freedom in the rules God has laid out for our lives and know that we go with the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, this day and always. Amen. See you next week.